Are y'all ready for some Southern Comfort Food Classics? Well, stick around because I got a bunch of them for you. Hey, hey, sweet friends. Welcome back or welcome if you are new. My name is Sammy and in today's video, I have got some yummy, yummy supper ideas that are straight from the Southern home front because I am originally from Mississippi and I just went back there. So I have been cooking up a storm to bring you some Southern comfort food classics. So sit back, relax, and I hope you enjoy this video because I know I did. Oh, these are some good ones, y'all. Come on, let's go. All right, y'all, this is an oldie but a goodie, and it hits right back to home when you think of Southern Comfort Food Classics. So starting off, we're going to have a meatloaf. And like I said, I've shared this many, many times before, but this is everything you're going to need to make this meatloaf. This is just how we make it here and how we enjoy it. But please feel free to make it any way y'all want to. But um, if you're looking for something different, please give this one a try. I'm sure you will absolutely love it. So just starting off, we're just going to go ahead and put our beef here in a bowl. And I'm using three pounds because I have three boys and myself. Um, well, three men, I should say, my husband and my two sons. So once you have that beef in here, you just want to season it and put that Lipton onion soup mix in there as well. I think I used the beefy onion this time. Some Worcestershire sauce right there. And then we'll add in our eggs, our saltine crackers, and then we're going to throw in as much or as little ketchup or you can just leave it out. It's whatever you all want for your family. Like I said, this is just how we make it, but it is completely customizable to your likings for your family. So we're just going to go ahead and put that ketchup on in. We're going to mix it on up, but you don't want to over mix it because then your meatloaf is going to be tough and dry and you just don't want that. So you just mix it up enough to where it's well combined. Go ahead and put it on in your casserole dish, your sheet pan, whatever you want to do. But um, this is by far probably one of my favorite go-to suppers when I'm in a quick hurry or anything like that it doesn't take very long um after work one night you can go ahead and throw it together and do other stuff around your house and dinner is ready in no time to go with the meatloaf i'm just going to go ahead and make up some mashed taters right here i just skin them um as much as i want to i'm just trying to take off the little bad pieces right there um in my water I always make my taters with some chicken broth or whatever but i had chicken bouillon and a little bit of salt and that's what i'm gonna go ahead and put in the water and you'll just want to let them boil on up and while those are cooking here's everything we're going to have there's the green beans there's the taters with the block of cream cheese and butter in them as well that's how i mash them up with some heavy whipping cream and seasonings of your choice and here is that delicious meatloaf we don't serve it with any type of thing on top of it because we all like something different and that's just how i make it but this was supper this night and it was absolutely delicious and it is a must try southern comfort classic And up next for the next night's supper, we are going to have breakfast for supper. This is one of our favorites here. I brought this sausage home from Mississippi. We can't find it up here in West Virginia, so we kind of stocked up on a lot of stuff and brought it on home. But that blueberry sausage is to die for. Um, I'll see if I can find a website for it or if you can order it online or if you're down in the southern area of mississippi louisiana um georgia anywhere like that you should be able to find it but we're just going to go ahead and cook this on up i have my corned beef hash right there in that skillet and i'm going to go ahead and put some hash brown patties on a sheet pan and just get them baked on up in the oven all i do with those is just um, spray my pan and then uh, lay those out put some seasoning on it and then put those in the oven until they're nice and crispy which don't take very long, but I just put them in there the, pretty much the whole time I was cooking. Right there, I'm going to go ahead and get my stuff for my cheese grits going. Um, I do leave those plain, but I do half and half of water and heavy whipping cream. It's just the way we like it. Do it however you want to. I put a little bit of butter and salt in there as well. 
and here i'm just putting all my eggs in a bowl and putting those seasonings in there whatever you choose i use um, cavenders and nature's seasoning scrambled those on up and set those aside so i could get this delicious blueberry sausage y'all i thought this was going to be a little bit sweeter um, i was kind of expecting that but i'm glad it wasn't um, because i think it would have been overpowering but this was just right and all i did was just fry that on up in the skillet there are those hash browns the grits um, both kinds of sausages but nobody ate the other kind so i just put it in there for the breakfast the next morning the cash corned beef hash and eggs this was by far one of our favorites All right, and up next, we're gonna make an easy red beans and rice. Um, this is pretty much how we grow up eating it. It is a little bit different though, because I'm using some ready rice right there, but you'll get the gist of it. This is so good and so hearty after a long day at work. And if it's cold outside, it's even better, but we'll eat this any time of the year. <laughs> I always stock up on these Blue Runner beans when I go down south. My mama keeps me in supply of them as well. So to start out with, I'm just gonna go ahead and slice up these smoked sausage. I use the beef kind, um, but typically when I go down south, I'll just go ahead and stock up on my Mall Bell sausage because that gives it the best flavor. But this will do in a pinch. So I just slice that on up. I'm gonna brown it off in a little bit of butter just to kind of render out that flavor of that sausage. That way everything can combine on in here and get absolutely delicious. So once that is in here, I'm just gonna take this whole can. Since it was just me and my husband this night, I'm just only using one of these and one of the black beans because I didn't have no pintos. And y'all, you gotta do with what you have instead of going on and buying extra stuff. So I just dump everything in this pan and I let this simmer on down. <clears throat> Excuse me. Once it is simmered on down, I'll just dump as much hot sauce in there as we like. Um, it is... However, your taste buds prefer is what you need to put into this, but I promise you, you won't be disappointed if you do try it. If you can't find those red beans, just make yours up in a crock pot or pan, however you want to. But this is by far one of my favorite Southern meals. It was so good, y'all. So good. This by far is probably one of my favorites. My brother made me a big catfish dinner or made everybody a big catfish supper. So we had a big catfish fry and I'm going to try to recreate it here, but we can't fry nothing outside up here in West Virginia because it is cold. But I have everything here I'm going to go ahead and make. I am using a few shortcuts. You saw that frozen um, hush puppies, but there ain't nothing wrong with taking a little bit of an advantage of a break to kind of help you know everyone out um, but here i'm just going to go through this catfish and make sure it don't have no bones in it or no pieces that need to be cut off so that is what i'm doing up here once i have all this fish um, cleaned up and cut the way i wanted it i put it back in the fridge and i made up my batter mix pretty much so it's eggs and mustard and milk you just mix that on up and I did put a little bit of seasoning in that just to kind of help it along. And then right here, I'm just drying off my catfish just as good as I can to where I can pour this batter mixture over it. Once I do that, I put it back in the fridge and let it just sit there until I get everything else made. This is the fish fry. I just wanted to go ahead and get everything ready. That way it's as easy as possible on me. Right here, I'm gonna make my coleslaw. Um, I like to chop mine up a little bit finer. This is just how I was raised eating it. Um, I'm starting off with some mayonnaise there, some Dukes by all means. Um, if you like Hellman's, that'll be good too. Either one's fine. Even if you have blue plate, that's just as good too. So I just put mayonnaise, mustard, and a little bit of sugar in here and some nature seasoning, I believe. <clears throat> and I just stir that together with a little bit of vinegar, put that in the fridge and let it get well combined and meshed all well together. Here's my tater salad. I'm doing a southern tater salad right now. I boiled my potatoes to our likings. However y'all want them, that's how you need to make it. Mayonnaise, mustard, some um, dill pickles that I just chopped up in my processor because I didn't have no relish. Some hard-boiled eggs, salt, and pepper to taste. Stir that on up until it's how y'all like it. Um, this is how we like it. 
and put it in the fridge and let it cool on off while you are making this fish right here. I just take it straight out of that batter, put it right on into the fish fry. That fish fry is loaded with flavor as well. You just wanna get those well coated and into a hot iron skillet of oil, or if you have a fryer, like I said, my brother had one outside, but I didn't, so we're gonna use our iron skillet. It's just as good. You know when the catfish is done, when it's nice and golden brown and the catfish floats to the top. That's what you wanna see. That way you don't overcook it. Once all my fish was done, I just put my hush puppies on in there and let them get golden brown and crispy. And y'all, dinner was ready to be plated on up. And here are the hush puppies and the fish right there. You see that nice golden color on it. This was so good. And the fish was so white and flaky. It was delicious. The hush puppies were cooked perfectly. There is that slaw and that tater salad. But I'm going to go ahead and plate this on up. And this was supper this night. And you can't go wrong with a good old fish fry, in my opinion. So good, y'all. All right, so I know I have made this so many times before, but I love me some pintos and cooking them in the crock pot is the best way before going to work in the morning because supper's basically done by the time I get home. So this is everything I used. I just used the Hearst ham beans. It's got the ham flavoring. Of course, I needed my Saison Goya for my beans, my ham hock and my onion. That's pretty much it. I soaked my beans overnight and just added them to my crock pot the next morning and put enough water in it. I believe it was about four to five cups until you're about an inch over the beans. I just measure with my fingertip because that's the easiest way for me. I don't know, however y'all want to do it, that's fine. I just added in some sliced onions right here, plop that ham hock down on in that crock pot, and then now it's time to season everything. So I only showed one packet, but I did use two of the Saison Goya in there and of course that ham flavor and as there as well and then i put some pepper in it and i always wait to put the salt in it until after i get home to taste it because of that ham hock and everything else being in there you don't want them to be too salty um, and they can get that way um, but this just put the lid on it and let it cook all day while you're at work here is the end results. That ham hock is pretty much falling apart. So I have got to dig that out of there and put that ham back in it because that's how we like it. You don't have to do it if you don't want to, but we waste not want not over here. But now I'm gonna go ahead and slice up some taters, brown this sausage up. This is how I make my fried taters for my beans. Um, I just put that on in there. Once that sausage is rendered in a little bit, I'll flop them taters on in there and season them on up as well. And then we'll just cook them until it's nice and golden brown and crispy because you want that crisp. You want that brownness on there before you add them into your beans or eat them separately, however you want to. But we like it all in one bowl, as you'll see here in a minute. <laughs> I go ahead and put them right on top of my beans and serve them on up. While these were browning though, I am gonna make some Jiffy corn muffin mix, but I like doing this because afterwards I have my cornbread and milk. And y'all have probably already seen that on Instagram if y'all follow me over there. If not, go check me out because I post a lot of stuff over there as well. It's just managing the maze. So go check me out over on Instagram. Here I am plating it all up. And yes, that is mayonnaise. Um, in the kitchen with Mama Mill got me started on this, as well as Cat over at Southern Farm and Kitchen. Both of those ladies are amazing. But here's my sliced cornbread. Here is my bowl of beans and taters. This was absolutely perfect. All right, y'all. Last but not least is Sketty. You gotta have Sketty. Uh, it was a Southern staple when I was growing up. We always had Sketty because um, it was cheap and easy to make. Now, anymore these days, it's not so cheap because of the meat, but it's still a staple at our house for a quick and easy weeknight supper. Um, I did get a really good deal on that ground beef. If y'all didn't see that, you can go back and look at it. But I just got my sauce, my tomato paste, my diced tomatoes, and then a thick and zesty spaghetti 
in a beefy onion soup mix or a Lipton onion soup mix. Either way, and pasta of your choice. We're just going to use the thin spaghetti. Starting out, we'll just put our beef in a pan. Season it however you want to. And once it's browned, that's when I add in the, well, I'm adding in onions right now to cook down with the meat. But once it's browned, that's when you want to add in your thick and zesty spaghetti sauce, um, the packet mix, and the beefy onion soup mix. Then you'll stir in the tomato paste. I thought I was recording, but I guess I wasn't. Once you got that tomato paste in there, you'll dump your can of tomatoes on in there as well. And then you will dump in your spaghetti sauce, whatever kind you want to. I'm using the roasted garlic from Aldi's, but any kind that you want to use, that is perfectly fine. All right, so that sauce is all nice and cooked up and the noodles are boiling. So whenever this is done, I just served it on up with some garlic breadsticks this night. But that is all for it this week's um, video. I hope you enjoyed this What's for Dinner Southern Comfort Classics. This was near and dear to my heart. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, hit that like button. Leave me a comment below and think about subscribing. I'd absolutely love to have y'all. God bless my friends. Bye.